Welcome to Let's Play D&D, Episode 8. This is my setup for today. Every time I sit down in the chair, it makes a sound. See? Wait. <laughs> okay. I've got my Cardinal God. I did come up with a name. Can't remember. Shitikata. Some kind of bird name. Thistitol. Something Lovecraftian. Thistitol. Lovecraft words don't have a lot of vowels. So here's my character sheet for Davok. He's level one. He has four hit points, he's 20 years of age, he has one XP, he has 10 GP, his alignment is true neutral, his strength is 9, intelligence 15, wisdom 16, constitution 11, charisma 13. His deity is either Cthulhu or Krom. Dionysus, Bacchus, or Thor. Those are his favorite gods. Equipment, majestic loincloth, steel sword, boots, small pouch, and a necklace. Um, on the back of the sheet, I'm writing the word background. He's from the frozen north. Or he might be from Utah. <laughs> I lived in Utah for eight years. After our family moved there, I was there for two weeks and I wanted to leave. I was ready to go. I had had enough. Instead, I suffered for a long eight years. So I'm hoping the camera picks up my voice. I just wanted to show my table display today. I've got this goddess. An idea for D&D that I've had for a long time is in relationship to this size character, I'm literally the size of what a titan would be. And they do have titans in D&D. Now, in comparison, she's a giant. Um, a tall giant. I like so much in Lord of the Rings Online, where they have hill giants or stone giants and they're 14 feet tall which is the proper D&D uh, &D height of a giant. A giant can be up to 20 feet in D&D. &D. Once you get bigger than that maybe uh, the entity is a titan my size in comparison to this girl. Just ideas I've had. So I could play as myself as a Titan against this. I could just step on her. Or um, to me she's just something I could fry up in a pan. Like to make noodles and humans. I just, uh, you know, grab a handful of humans, fry them up on my pan, in my pan, and have a nice dinner. Protein. Okay. And I have a bunch of cool animals. I paid good money for these vintage animal figurines. So it is a part of D&D &D to 
say she comes across a tiger and the tiger is ravenous and wants to eat her. Uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to keep it clean here. Okay. So that's not my natural inclination to do so. But today I want to roll Little Bo Peep's stats. I don't even have a proper name for her yet. Let's see. Yeah, my trusty clipboard. I got the box, I'll draw the character. Strengths. Intelligence. Wisdom. Dexterity. Constitution and Charisma. In this game, classic D&D, I'm just rolling three dice, six. Whatever I get, that's what she is. And it's just too fucking bad. I've got three, three white dice right here. So without further delay, here's strength, whatever it is. 11, 13, that's not bad. Intelligence, how smart she is. And 11, she's stronger than she is smart. For wisdom, 11.13. She's as wise as she is strong. Dexterity. Wow, 14. Her best role so far. She might be a thief. 12 for constitution. How many beers she can drink in a session and not get drunk. Wow, charisma, 5. No one likes her. <laughs> She's just a bitch. Ah, uh, with a five charisma, she's just not gonna make any friends. That cuts off her dating opportunities, basically. Oh my God, that's terrible. Not even other girls will like her. So there's that. Now I have to draw a picture of Little Bo Peep. I like this figure from uh, Toy Story. And she has a staff, so it looks like a D&D weapon. It's got a hook on the staff, just like a hooker would use. The figure, she looks around. 18. I like to draw when I get in the mood. I gotta do more of it. I used to draw every day. I did go to art school. That was my job to draw pictures. I tried for many years to make a living as an artist, but now I have a real legitimate job. Pays way more than being an artist, that's for sure. Uh, I did have good nights being an artist. And I had a lot of bad nights. Sometimes I'd only make $20 in six hours. Yeah, I like Little Bo Peep. She's hot. She's somehow going to have to figure out how to get higher charisma so she can have a life. You can't go through life with a five charisma. Trust me, I know. I'll draw her in uh, an open field. 
Um, her background is she was a shepherdess. So that would go under her skills. She knows how to herd sheep. Shepherdess. I don't know where that will come in handy. It will eventually in D&D &D because characters get hungry, they have to eat. Okay, there's my picture. Okay, so I have two character sheets. I have seven characters, seven player characters that I have to do. So it's going to take a while before I get all those sheets together. I have two packs of dice that I bought from the dollar store. And I have to open these babies up. Doesn't do me any good for them to be in the package. I still have one package of these somewhere. I don't know where. Can't lose my dice. This is another great and exciting video. Alright, here goes the other package. I think the other package is in there somewhere. Okay, my dice collection is growing. So, lots of fun stuff going on here. So every single video of this D&D series, I read from the starter set rule book, just a paragraph or two, or one section. Oh, I even have a place mark. Advantage and disadvantage was a really crappy section. I, I've never heard of that. I don't even get it yet. I, I'll have to reread it. Ability checks. Did I read that? I'll read it again. Ability checks. An ability check tests a character's or monster's innate talent and training in an effort to overcome a challenge. The DM calls for an ability check when a character or monster attempts an action other than an attack that has a chance of failure. A character might make a strength check to force open a door, an intelligence check to make sense of clues, or a wisdom check to notice goblins lying in ambush along the road. That makes no sense. When the outcome is uncertain, the dice determine the results. That would be more along the lines of awareness rather than wisdom. To make an ability check, roll a d20 and add the appropriate ability modifier. You use your strength modifier for a strength check, for example. Thanks. If the total equals or exceeds the DC, the ability check is a success. Otherwise, the check is a failure, which means the character or monster makes no progress toward the objective or makes progress combined with a setback determined by the DM. Often, the adventure book tells the DM what kind of check a character can make, the DC of the check, and what happens if the character succeeds or fails. Since characters often try unpredictable things, though, the adventure book also provides advice to help the DM decide what kind of ability check in DC to use in a particular situation. So I haven't played D&D for many years, and if you're just reading this book, and this is your first time reading anything about D&D, I still don't know how to play. The language is kind of bulky, the type isn't dark enough, Lots of small text. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. The, this illustration is kind of cool. I like the simple black and white pen and ink drawings. And, 
instead of stuff done on the computer. Uh, let's open this up. This is my button bag craft kit. Ah. Can't even open this up. I need scissors. Oh, you tell you tell me I don't have a pair of scissors. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, it comes with a needle. That's nice. So I can sell buttons and things on this pouch. It's too girly for me, which proves I'm not gay. All right, this is a nice pouch for dice. Okay, that works. There's nothing cooler than having a proper dice bag. It's just how it should be done. So now I can put all the magical dice into this pouch. That's badass. I haven't had a proper dice pouch in a long time. This is exciting for me. So if you've been watching my videos, the, the, the videos in this D&D series, you can just tell like how little happens in the videos to actually play D&D. Where I'm actually playing it. Uh, a lot of the work of D&D just has to be done. And you can't bypass it. I need a dice bag. It makes a cool sound. Okay. Let's see how we're doing on time. 17.33. See, I've already used up all the time in the video and I've hardly done anything. But that's how D&D is. It's a lifestyle. I don't know. Our adventurers might actually meet a stegosaurus or a T-Rex. So the, the idea of dinosaurs on a lost island that goes back to the King Kong movie from 1933. Jurassic Park came much later. The Skull Island with dinosaurs. The idea of it is still really cool. I'm not a fan of Jurassic Park. It's okay. The first one was okay. I got my favorite Monopoly tokens. Uh, and I've got this stupid dragon. I've mentioned it before and I didn't even realize it. The game is called Dungeons and Dragons but you hardly ever meet a dragon. Let's see, what else do we have? I'm collecting Legos. My car got stolen. One of my cars. I had a plastic bag filled with dollar store Legos. Uh, there was about a hundred dollars worth of these Legos in that bag. So now I have to buy all those over again. I was planning on making them into dungeons. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. It's really fun to be getting back into D&D. It's part of my soul. All those years in art school, I kind of forgot about this game or didn't have much to do with it. It was too goony. 
and there was no reason to play it. But now that I'm older, I can be a kid again. That's how it works. Thanks for watching. I hope the audio is good. But whether it is or not, I'm just going to put up the video anyway. So this whole hallway system is the D&D &D world. Uh, in scale for the characters to travel through this floor of storage units could take a year. But I have nothing but time. Oh, we might as well take a look in here. So I've got racetracks, masks, record players, board games. I have everything I need to play D&D. &D. All right, thanks for watching.